Here's one of those evolutionary questions we always have a bit of fun with. I certainly love these. It's the questions of our origin as a human species is always going to occupy our minds. Well, scientists at Stellenbosch University have, of course, been preoccupied with that, and actually all their work has borne some fruit. So it's research that has shed the light on the origin of humans right here on African soil on the African continent, but it goes further than that. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome Professor Marlo Moller uh, joining me to talk about what really, uh, Prof, good morning to you. Very exciting, uh, very, very interesting, because I always thought there was an assumption based on science, of course, that humans did come from Africa, but now we have this so-called weakly structured stem. Good morning. What is this about? Good morning. Yes, we are still from Africa. We're just saying there wasn't a single point of origin in Africa where humans evolved from. Um, instead, we're saying there were multiple points of origin and that this happened at the same time across Africa. So we're looking deeper into our African origins. So essentially what we're seeing is two evolutionary branches of Homo sapiens uh, splitting off. That's why we're using the analogy of branching off, aren't we? We're talking about uh, a splitting of this. Why is this important uh, for us to know? What does it mean for us uh, humans today, Homo sapiens today, if you will? Oh dear, Prof, looks like your picture yeah, might be frozen. Sorry, Prof, thought. I'm going to so, ask you uh, to stop and just restart that answer for me. You froze for a second. I want to make sure I get the whole answer. Sorry, start that again for me. No worries. Um, so it seems that we have more genetic diversity at our origins than we originally thought. And this might be why we're so su successful as a species today. Um, it, because we had more um, this diverse stem, instead of a tree of life, we're looking at a tangled vine. So I think that's a, a nice analogy to compare these stems to. No, it certainly is. So now we have these two vines, these two stems, if you will, however weakly structured. So what we're going to have now is a discussion around contemporary African populations. And my understanding is populations living outside of Africa. But that's also got to be one of the big questions. If we've known it's always from Africa, uh, if we look at stem number two, if we will, if you'll allow me uh, and uh, entertain me, it's the populations outside of Africa. Does this help us understand how we got into the rest of the world as a human species? So actually STEM2 is not outside of Africa. Both of these stems are inside of Africa. What we're talking about now is these stems before humans moved out of Africa. Mm. Um, these stems were in Africa, both of them. And so when we start looking at how we take the understanding of us as a species forward, apart from understanding that there are now two stems, what do you as, as a professional, as a professor, do with this information? How does this help you understand uh, us uh, through the evolutionary scale? Well, I think this brings the genetic data closer to the fossil record, because with the fossil records, although the single origin theory started with the fossil records, there was always this question that we were finding fossils all over Africa and tools from humans at around from around the same time period. And that's why the single origin theory really didn't fit well. But with our genetic data, we're now complementing the fossil record and we can show that there was this multiple origins in Africa. Yeah, so we're looking at ancient genomic data versus current DNA as well. Does this start to bring the two more in line with each other? Yes, and I think one of the exciting things is that we can use modern contemporary human DNA to look back at the past. You know, we don't always have DNA from fossils, and some of the fossils were destroyed. So it's fascinating that we can still pick up these patterns in humans today. So this is obviously a fairly new model now, uh, Prof. And as I, I start saying goodbye to you, where do you take this to next? What do you do with this? Apart from understanding what it is currently, why it was the way it was, got to us to this point in our evolution, where does the story of, of humans go next when you now have this kind of information that has just been uncovered? So every model is just a model, right? So it can be improved. And this is exactly what we want to do. We want to sample more African participants from across the country. And there are several initiatives ongoing to make this a reality. Africa is terribly underrepresented in genomic research. And you have, having this DNA from the continent is so powerful. We have to wait, work to make this better. And um, we want to test with this additional samples how this affects our model and if it still holds.
And I want to make sure that we talk about the experts behind this, Prof. Obviously, you and I are sitting here talking, uh, Prof. Muller, but I'm sure there's a team involved with this as well. Uh, and I just want to get a sense of how many people are involved in this. I'm sure, Prof, you could uh, just shed some light on the kind of work that they're doing uh, and the kind of research that they're involved in. But it's not just Prof. Muller. There's an entire team and colleagues that you're working with, isn't there? Exactly. So it's our collaborators in the USA, Professor Brenna Hinn from the University of California, Davis. And then we also got data from the African um, Genetic Diversity Panel. So it's actually hundreds of scientists helping. On this paper, it's just the people who are directly involved. And um, then also Professor Eileen Hall from Stellenbosch University, who also helped with um, sampling the NAMA samples. Oh, Prof, congratulations to you and your team as well. I mean, just when you think we know everything we can about where we came from, why we are where we are as a species, uh, here we are again uh, with this new model shedding light. Uh, Professor Moller from Cape Town, thank you very much indeed. Professor Marlo Moller from Stellenbosch University. It's these uh, weakly structured stems. Uh, it's made up of a mixture of two branches uh, of Homo sapiens, a bit of a split, if you will. It's fascinating to follow. I must be honest, I'm not nearly clever enough, but I do find it very, very interesting, uh, the kind of research uh, being done.